Hello and welcome to Reporters. In this edition, we head to southern Chile, where a long-running conflict between the indigenous Mapuche people and the police has taken a radical turn. Recent months have seen a spate of arson attacks, threats and armed confrontation, which the authorities have classified as terrorism. Well, our reporter Ingrid Piponio joins us now from Rio. Thanks for joining us, uh, Ingrid. Tell us a little bit more about what you've seen uh, on the ground. Well, in Chile, the Mapuche conflict has become an extremely sensitive topic. When we arrived at the main city of the region, at first everything seemed normal. But the rural areas where the Mapuche people live are highly militarized. We have seen police patrolling in armored vehicles, sometimes even followed by tanks. So there is a permanent control, a systematized repression, which explains why we felt during this report that the Mapuche people were always mistrustful. Even as journalists, we had a hard time with communities accepting us into their land because the Mapuche people know that the Chilean state is keeping a close watch on them, so any sensitive statement could directly send them to prison, as you will see in this report. Time for us to take a look at Ingrid's report. Temuco, southern Chile. It's the heart of the Mapuche homeland and a bastion of their long-standing fight to recover ancestral territory. A battle that often sends activists to prison. For the Mapuche people, the prison has become a rallying spot. This morning, a hundred of them have come from all over the region, invited by Gabriela, a Mapuche leader. You'll have to wait. We're going to have lunch. But wait, we agreed on this time. It would take them two minutes to let us in. It's really dishonest of them. Gabriela is irritated. They all traveled for hours to participate in a religious ceremony inside the prison to show support for the incarcerated activists. We're here so our brothers in prison aren't left alone. But it isn't normal to be facing this situation. They shouldn't be in prison. Convention 169 supposedly protects the rights of indigenous people. But sadly, in Chile, it isn't respected. They finally managed to get inside the prison without any incident. It's a gesture from the authorities to pacify an extremely tense situation. Last July, the same group visit escalated into violent confrontations resulting in over 50 wounded. The Mapuche resistance is becoming more radical. Massed groups attack companies established on their territories, their ancestral homeland. The state has responded by cracking down with force. President Piñera says the crackdown is his priority. There is clearly terrorism in the region, and it's one group that claims responsibility for the majority of these terrorist attacks. The most radical branch of the Mapuche movement is called the CAM. It's led by Hector Laitul. Long live the battle of the Mapuche people. We had to meet with the autonomous leader two hours away from Temuco, in the heart of the rebel stronghold. Before Spanish colonists arrived, the Mapuche territory extended over almost 100,000 square kilometers. Today, they own just 5% of that land. The loss pushed Hector to radicalize his fight. He spent over four years in prison. He agreed to meet us on the land where he orchestrated the first arson attacks 20 years ago. Look, all of these are logging companies. They own millions of hectares of pine and eucalyptus plantations. For us who live here, it's pretty much an ecocide. The effects on the environment are devastating. It's a destruction. Since the 70s, monoculture has invaded the region and dried the soil. The Mapuche communities have been marginalized and evicted from the land. Their region is the poorest in Chile, even though they represent 10% of the country's population. For Hector, that justifies using sabotage tactics. 
Our actions are part of territorial demands, autonomous demands, and the defense of the Mapuche culture. If we use resistance or self-defense tactics, it is because we are responding to a historical violence. The violence comes from the state. It comes from the capitalist system, which causes and reinforces the repression of the Mapuche people. The UN Human Rights Committee, the European parliamentarians, all of these observers came and confirmed that here. Chile is not dealing with terrorism, but with a Mapuche social movement, which is very legitimate. Radical organizations like Hector's have multiplied on the Mapuche territory. Over the past 12 months, 90 arson attacks and acts of sabotage have been reported in the region. The most destructive one happened last April to the Aridos Mardones Company, which builds access roads to tree plantations. In one night, 16 machines were burned down by a group of masked men. Medium is the owner of this business, which employs 70 people. They are all still in shock. Christian, Christian could you please come? This technician was the first one to arrive the night of the attack. These are the pictures I took that night. I also have a video, look. I felt so helpless seeing what the boss had built during all those years, consumed by flames. In less than an hour, everything was reduced to ashes. Since the attack, the company has been under police protection. The damage is estimated at over a million euros. Medium's family business is struggling to recover. The trucks were here in a line. In all, they burned down machines in three different spots. But what is the point of burning down so many machines, so many trucks? Many people's work depend on them. I don't understand. Originally from the neighboring city, Medium has been renting this plot of land from her Mapuche neighbors for over 25 years. Here we are on Mapuche territory. It belongs to a community, but we pay to be here. We are not stealing land from anybody. For Miriam, this attack is a first, but not a surprise. Most neighboring companies have already suffered from sabotage. The region hasn't received any foreign investment for the past seven years, and tourism this year has dropped by 40 percent. Restoring order has become a priority for Luis Mayol, the local governor and a personal friend of the president. This territory is unique and united. Those who claim the right to an autonomous territory are a minority group. And many of their actions represent a terrorist threat, according to all the national and international laws. But the United Nations seems to disagree. The UN criticized Chile in 2013 for the unjustified use of the word terrorism in the Mapuche conflict. In this region, the insecurity generated by this conflict has affected the investments. And the reduction of investments obviously means less economic growth. So this problem needs to have a solution. Since the beginning of the year, the governor's office has applied the anti-terrorism law on over 10 arts and attacks for which the Mapuche claimed responsibility. This law, inherited from the Pinochet dictatorship, was used to subdue the military government's opponents. Today, President Piñera is seeking to reinforce it. His target, the so-called Red Zones, where most Mapuche attacks take place. This is where Jaime lives. The community spokesman drives us to neighboring land plots where tensions with police have escalated in recent weeks. Do you have your ID? It's a routine inspection. Because here you're in a conflict zone. According to the police, they're doing identity checks. But they are mainly here to establish fear and show that the Chilean state is indivisible and there is no place for other nations. Armored vehicles patrol the heart of this red zone. As a precaution, the community has blocked access roads. Rodrigo and his mother established their home on a logger's land three years ago. Last month, they were victims of a violent police raid. The family was accused of possessing stolen cars. 
My niece filmed everything with the cell phone, and she's really young. She's only five years old. These images show forceful police action by armed officers against the women in the family who were home alone that day. They took my grandmother away, and it made me feel very sad. That's why I'm crying a little on the video. They came in like this, pointing at us with their guns through the window. They told me that they had a legal authorization, but never showed it to me. Despite the absence of stolen cars, the 59-year-old grandmother was taken to the police station. Later, she was released. The only motive of our mobilization is to recover the land that was stolen from us. And that forces us to confront this reality, where we can neither sleep peacefully nor live peacefully during the day. This is a situation all Mapuche communities deal with in this region. Here, there is clearly impunity concerning the actions of the military police, which has been present in this zone for years, and they keep on giving them more and more power to act. The crisis is now extending beyond regional borders. For the first time, a Mapuche leader has been extradited from Argentina to Chile under high security. Over 40 Mapuche activists are incarcerated in both countries. Lisette has become one of the symbols of their fight. Her husband, Luis Tralcal, was the first Mapuche to receive a lifetime prison sentence earlier this year. He's been on the run for over three months. Here, we used to have strawberries because Luis took care of them, but now there's nothing left. That often happens in the communities because the men are usually the ones who take care of the land. When they're arrested, the crops are neglected. Lisette is now the sole caretaker for her four-year-old daughter and one-month-old son. He's never met his father, Luis, one of the leaders of the Mapuche fight. That's my dad. Luis has already been tried in nine separate cases, but never found guilty. In total, he spent over three years in preventive detention. In an attempt to prove her husband's innocence once again, Lisette has appealed to the Supreme Court. Hello, how are you? I'm good, and you? Eduardo, her lawyer, is coming for a final check of the case file. Here is the complaint we're going to file for the false testimony that has been used to charge your husband and his brother. False testimony, lack of access to official documents. In all, the lawyer has noted over 10 procedural flaws in Lisette's husband's case. This case has been reopened three times. The first two times, the judges considered it was not terrorism. So what's changed during this third ruling for them to now say it is a terrorist act? Invoking the anti-terrorism law allows an increase in preventive prison time. Here, some people have spent over two years in prison waiting for a hearing that finally sets them free. These are violations of our fundamental rights. It's clear that judges behave differently in our region compared with the rest of the country. I'm ashamed as a lawyer to tell you that despite all the evidence which in any other court of the world would have been enough to find Lewis innocent, here in our region he was found guilty. It's very hard for me to accept that, so my only hope now is that the Supreme Court will solve this case based on the law and not political pressure. The Supreme Court ended up maintaining Luis Tralcal's sentence of 18 years in prison. Absent during his trial, he now lives in hiding. The radical groups and government authorities refuse to carry out any kind of dialogue. And inexorably, the Mapuche rebellion continues to rise. Our reporter Ingrid Piponio is uh, still with us. Uh, Ingrid, tell us a little bit more about the state's approach uh, in terms of pacifying this, this complicated situation. Well, for the last 20 years, it's true that the Chilean state prides itself on having bought back over 180,000 hectares of land from companies, which are mainly logging companies, to give back to the Mapuche communities. But the activists that we met highly criticized this initiative. According to them, those who end up benefiting the most from this transaction are actually the companies themselves who sell the land to the state for up to 12 times the original price. So that's why many Mapuche people turned their back to the institutional solution offered by the Chilean state. They prefer to reclaim the land autonomously by settling on private properties with the fear of being violently dislodged by the authorities.
For more on the effect of all of that, we can uh, listen to one of the people we saw in your report, the Mapuche leader, uh, Rodrigo. Both left-wing and right-wing governments have long implemented a policy of repressing those Mapuche who demand social and land rights. The state tries to entice others with lofty promises of political participation. But for us, assimilation is not a solution to the problem. We heard a little bit more there, Ingrid, about what is a problematic uh, relationship. How, how do you see a potential way out of this? Well, nobody we met seemed to believe there would be a Pacific way out of this conflict, at least in a short term. Because the stronger the authorities repress them, the more the activists will radicalize their fight. They even said to us on many occasions that they were ready to give up their lives for this cause. Actually, all of the Mapuche leaders we have met during this report, and that includes Rodrigo, whom we just heard talking, all of them have already been incarcerated. And in some cases, even their underage sons have already been to prison. Because this new generation has also joined the fight. And these young Mapuche people grew up inside the rebellion in illegally reclaimed land, dealing with permanent confrontation with police authorities. So they are the ones who will be ensuring the continuity of this fight which doesn't seem to be running out of steam anytime soon. Ingrid Peponio in Rio de Janeiro, thanks very much for joining us. And you can uh, see Ingrid's report again on our website, france24.com, along with all the other editions of Reporters. Do join us again for another show next week.